Today, I'm going to be showing you one of the easiest ways to develop black and white film at home with one simple step and no heating temperature management required. Hey team, my name is Will Cobb and I am a film photographer out on the central coast of California and I make all kinds of film photography and home developing and scanning videos like this one. If you want to learn more about film developing, come along for the journey and let me be your teacher. I'm always answering your comments and Instagram DMs as fast as I can to help with any questions you may have. So subscribe to support me here and show your appreciation with a little thumbs up. It goes a long way. Oh, and before we get going, please write down in the comments any other developing techniques you wanna see. I'm open for it. I'll make any videos on developing techniques you guys wanna see down there. With just one chemical, we can develop black and white film at home at room temperature or whatever ambient temperature it is. And of course, my favorite film developing chemical company is the one making it. Hashtag not a sponsored video. This is the Cine Still DF96 mono bath black and white one chemical to rule them all one chemical to find them one chemical to bring them all and in the darkness bind them so if you watch any of my other developing videos you know that i really like the powder kits over the liquid kits and that's really because of the longevity the powder can sit on your shelf for a really long time whereas the liquid goes bad a lot fast, especially on the color chemicals. The dry chemicals actually say that you need to use it up to two months after you mix this. This says it has one year of shelf life from the time of purchase and it does not say how long it lasts after it's open. It's generally a few months. I've actually had this open for almost a year. Uh, we're gonna use this one today because I've only put three rolls to it and you can get a lot of rolls to these. It says 16 plus on it. So we're gonna be using this one today and hope it works out. Also, the two rolls that we're gonna be working with today actually went through the x-ray at the airport on accident, and uh, hopefully they're not ruined. So I also said this in my other video, but I always recommend buying two powder kits. These things go out of stock a lot, so I like to keep one on the shelf and one in use. So I definitely think that it's a good idea to get two, stock up and be a good photographer have your chemicals on hand. One more thing before we dive in is to check the CineStill website to make sure that your film is compatible. This chemical does not work on every type of black and white film. I'll leave a link below where you can check out if your film is compatible. Sometimes black and white films need different processes depending on its chemical makeup. Check your label and make sure it works. All right, again, we have the liquid chemical kit today. This is so easy. Just read the side of the label here and you can see that it's ridiculous. You can use this thing at room temperature. So we're going to grab a thermometer, check what the temperature is, and it will tell us what time we need to use. So I've got my thermometer here. Turn it on. It's reading 71. Okay. It is at our room temperature right now of 71. So we just read that it's reading at about room temperature, 71 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can see right here, it says that 70 degrees Fahrenheit with minimal agitation for more than or equal to six minutes. We're gonna do six minutes. This is a little bit older chemical, so we're gonna go with that six minutes. And that is so nice that you can use this thing at room temperature. You can speed up the process. If you read the side here, you can go up to doing it in three minutes with uh, heating this up to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's not even that necessary. If you haven't watched my developing videos before, definitely do that to get more in-depth view on what I'm gonna be doing in the next steps. A lot of the same things apply uh, to what we're gonna be doing in the way that I'm developing, except for we're, we're gonna be using a different chemical. I go way more in-depth in my color developing video, so definitely go check that out. I'll link it above, link it below. Go check that video out if you want all the details. I'm gonna show some of those details now, but again, go watch that video. It's even more in depth and you can apply it to our black and white as well. So first up, we need our materials. We need our dark bag. We need our chemicals. We need our gloves. We need our tank. This has two reels in it for the two rolls of film we're gonna be using today. I've got a funnel here, thermometer that we just used, scissors to cut these off and our film leader retriever, which I'll show you in just a second. 
how to use that. I'm gonna list all the items down below. If you wanna purchase any of those, there is an affiliate link that supports this channel. I'm not sponsored by any of the companies, but these are the things that I'm using right here in front of me. And if you buy them using those links, I get a little kickback at no additional cost to you. So thank you for using those links. So before we go into the dark bag, we need to get our film leader out of the canister. What I do to use this is the film leader retriever. This thing is awesome. I love this thing so much. And it helps me get my leader out of my canister. I've already gotten it out right here. I'm actually not gonna put this one back in there. Let me grab another roll of film to show you. I've got a roll of film here, and I've shown this really well in my other video. I'm gonna take my film leader retriever closed and stick it inside of there. And I'm gonna go ahead and push in my first leader all the way in. And then I'm gonna spin counterclockwise the roll inside of there. And once I do that, I'm gonna listen for a little click that's gonna tell me when to put in the next one. And that's when I slip in the last one, and then I give it a pull, and there it is. My leader has been retrieved. So that's the technique you need to do to open up your film canisters. You can go ham and use a can opener inside your bag, but that's dumb. What's cool about this technique is you can take this before, take your scissors and cut it a flat length. And you can actually take your reel and preload it without having to use the dark bag. So to do this, we just cut off that in there and get a little bit out, stick it on our reel, get it up and get it just started on the little balls that are on each side. Once that's started, when we're inside the bag, we ratchet it all the way down and we're gonna cut off the end of the, of the film right there. There's my two reels to get started inside the bag. So again, when we're inside the bag, we're gonna roll this all the way on until it stops and we're gonna cut off the last little bit in the bag. So I'm gonna lay my dark bag out here and what we need to do to put inside of it is our tank body, our center column, which is very important to remember the center column. The bottom is this flange side. We need to put this light tight lid here. And those are the only things we need from the tank to go inside. We need to put our two reels and our two rolls that are pre-started inside of our bag. And the last thing is our scissors. We'll zip up our bag and put our hands inside the light tight spot. We're gonna ratchet the rest of the roll on, cut it off, put it into the tank, and close on that light tight seal, and then that's when we're able to pull it out. This is a really easy way to do it, um, rather than trying to bust the can open inside of there and trying to fiddle around in the dark. We have to do that with 120, and that's a lot harder, but 35, super easy. So now you have it loaded, which is actually the hardest part. It's smooth sailing from here. Let's throw on these gloves, and we'll dump our chemicals into the bottle for the duration we determined earlier, which is gonna be six minutes. And we're gonna agitate minimally four flips every 30 seconds. So let's throw our gloves on and get going. All right, we're gonna take our chemicals, we're gonna pour it straight into there. I've got a timer off camera because my phone is being used for something else right now. So here we go, six minutes. Throw that in there. Probably a little too much chemicals for what it is right here, but that's okay. Give it a little bit of agitation. We're gonna take our lid, put that on there. Make sure that lid is all the way on there. Sometimes these guys are a little loose. Set my funnel up for the dump in a little bit. I'm gonna go out and agitate. I'm gonna flip it over once, twice, three times, four times. And every 30 seconds from now on, I'm gonna agitate and keep that going for the six minutes. Again, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit through the agitation and rinsing because that's covered in my other developing video. Again, go check that one out. If you wanna see that more in depth, it's pretty straightforward with the agitation and rinsing for several minutes after and then using PhotoFlow. But I'll talk about that in just a second. So after we finish that six minutes, we can dump our chemicals back into the bottle using this funnel, we can reuse that bottle up to 16 times or more, uh, as what it says on there. And uh, I, this is awesome. This bottle is actually 
over a year old and it still worked like a charm. We wanna then take our film immediately to the sink and rinse it off with tap water. That is gonna rinse off any of the residue left on there. You're gonna to wanna to keep it under the tap water for about three minutes or more, trying to do at least seven, maybe 10 full fill-ups and then dumps of the canister. And then you're gonna to wanna to rinse it down with this Photo Flow. I've talked about this a lot in all my videos. This is a well-used bottle. It's a mixture of one milliliter to 200 milliliters of distilled water. I mix up a big batch in this distilled water gallon and I pour a liberal amount over it at the very end. That helps the water sheet off while it's drying. Uh, this is a invaluable tip. Watch my full developing video. Uh, again, if you haven't, I talk a lot about this stuff. It's amazing. Photo flow, you should get this. So once you have doused it in photo flow, give your reel a few flicks to get off the, as much photo flow as you can. And then you're gonna wanna hang it up on some clips on a hanger somewhere where it's not dusty, unlike a garage where I hang mine, but you know, that's just where I have to hang it. And then you're done. You're gonna let that dry. It needs to dry for at least an hour. And then you're into scanning. I've got some great scanning videos on my channel here. I use a V600 flatbed scanner and a lot of different other DSLR scanning techniques that I've been working with. There's gonna be a lot more of those coming out in the future. Recently, I used the Veloy film scanner. I really liked this guy and I made a video about it. Go check that out. There's gonna be a full in-depth walkthrough coming through very soon. So stay tuned for that as well. I also like to just lay out all of my pieces when I'm done. I rinse them very well after the photo flow. You don't want any of that photo flow residue on there for the next developing session. So rinse them very well after that. And I just have a towel and I lay them out to dry overnight or whatever. And it is that easy to develop black and white film with the Cine Still Mono Bath. It's nuts, I love this stuff. Please consider subscribing if you found value from this video and it helped you out. Comment below any questions you might have. I'm always down to help out. And also comment if you wanna see any other types of developing. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.